Bruce, it looks like we're ready to ride, but how do we hold the uh, rope on our saddle and how do we hold it when we have to deal with reins at the same time? One of the probably the most traditional way of carrying your rope when it's on your saddle is to make a uh, light out of leather, a light strap, go ahead and collect it around. Some have little uh, buckles, but just go ahead and put it around there just wrap your rope two or three times, and then we have a split that sets over your horn. Now, the important thing here is, you see guys making these sometimes out of parachute cord or something pretty heavy. One of the things you have to think about, if your horse falls or if you get bucked off, you catch your foot in this rope, and there's something heavy that won't break with your weight, you can be trapped and drugged with that. And so it's good to have this lightweight enough, better to go have to buy a new rope than instead of buying a new leg. Great advice. Now, as far as, as holding the reins and how we're gonna handle this rope, we'll go ahead and shake that out. One of the things we should have probably on your horn is it should be wrapped. Here we've got it wrapped with just black inner tube. You can go to stores and buy rubber wrapping they also have, uh, you can take mule hide, and there's a way to wrap this horn uh, to help hold the rope so it doesn't slip. That leather is pretty slick. If you're roping something heavy, a lot of times it'll go ahead and move on you. Now I like to take, first thing I do, I've got my coil of rope. I'm holding here in the traditional Central Plains way. I've got one finger through my reins, split reins. I'm gonna drop my tail of my rope over. I don't want it to touch the ground, but I like to have a, a couple of feet over there. I get my coils lined up, and then I go ahead and build myself a loop. Get it about like I want it. I swing it. Everything's good. Now look, I've got my coils and my reins in this hand. You want those reins tight enough because you're going to have to help guide the horse and give him direction. You don't want, I don't care how good he is, you don't want this because you need to be in control. The horse, will, if he's a good one, will help you find the cow and he'll know what he wants to do. But you may have to go ahead and pick up, stop, do whatever, make a change. So keep that fairly short, comfortable level for you and your horse. Then I've got my loop, the size that I want. The next step is this slack between my rope hand and the coils. I want that short enough that I don't rope tangle myself up and get it around my neck. I don't want it so short that I can't swing my rope. So I want a happy medium there. And then these coils are gonna be everybody's different shape as to uh, how big you want them. Most guys at heel have bigger coils. There's a reason for that because as they throw, they can thumb those off. Guys that head usually have smaller coils, but it's all how it fits you. And so you've got it in your hand. I've got my reins. I've got these. And so what I can do is ride my horse and I can control these as how far I have to throw. You know, a short throw, I may not, may never let a coil go. If I'm trying to reach a long way, I may thumb them all off. So the other thing is when you got this coil up here, do not, you know, you can carry it a lot of ways, but you can get in trouble with this. You know, I've seen a lot of kids, you spin a horse around, this hand comes, you end up roping your horse's head. Or you're messing around, you get it over his butt. Next thing you know, you got it underneath his tail. Is that a good, when the rope gets under the tail, they're gonna buck or they're gonna freeze down and it's gonna, you, the worst thing you can do is pull it out. You don't wanna do that. The other thing is, when you're out here, have some etiquette. Yeah, you and your brother at home may heal each other's horses, but one, healing horses is not a good idea because if it does come tight, you can hurt those horses. Horses are not made to be healed, we can, like cattle. We can really hurt their hip. When they're catching wild horses, they would rope them around the neck and then they would rope the front feet for control, they don't rope the back feet because you can hurt a horse pretty badly.
The other thing is, don't ride up and rope somebody's horse. Uh, just don't do it because you don't know if he's rope broke or not. So that's a cardinal sin is to be roping something and especially somebody else's horses. The other thing is be aware. We're going to have young people or any, any in any arena, you're going to have some people whose horses have never seen a rope and just the simple swinging of a rope is going to scare them. And, you know, so you need to find an area where you're safe and it's not going to get somebody in trouble. And I really believe it is your responsibility. So you need to help take care of others as well as taking care of yourself. Great advice. The, the other thing we really get into in this riding deal, everybody worries about the rope hand and stuff. But as you're practicing roping and stuff, and then when you really start roping uh, livestock and doing things, this hand, your left hand, is really the more important. Kids get so everybody gets so they can catch pretty quick. But they get in habits, and so you're throwing your rope, and the cow's going straight here, you throw your rope, and then trying to get your slack, you got this hand going and you got, you're reining your horse off. What's your chance of getting a dally going 100 miles an hour? See, you've got to control both hands to keep things going. So if I come up here and I'm driving to something and I rope it, I pull my slack, I'm gonna run this hand up this horse's neck, get my rope tight, then I'm going to go and make my wrap. And then my horse hopefully is rating off. If he's not, I can pick him up, keep him out of the rope. And I've got control of the run. But if I just go out here and I throw it, and when I pull my slack, I let this hand go out here with my reins, where's my horse going to go? So then we've got two things coming tight at once, and nothing will work out. So having control of that left hand is, is really good. One of the things we didn't talk about is there is another way to hold these reins, and I want to bring that up. This is, is uh, uh, we do this with, with uh, sports reins or a, or a closed rein, and that is just put it like this in your hand. We've, I've still got one finger through it. I've got my rope here, and it's the same thing just in reverse but this is more comfortable. Uh, a lot of people feel this is more comfortable and they've got more control. And with rope and reins, it's almost always done that way. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't have to be, it's what's comfortable. Now, the, the other thing we get into is, Chris, if you'll take that and just walk backwards. Chris, is my, I got my slack, just keep walking. See how I dally with an open hand and I let that rope run through my hand you know, I'm not grabbing it. See, now walk backwards, just keep pulling. See what happens when I hold on to it? Doesn't take much to tip me over. You can come on up. The, you can drop it now. But you can you can sit there and, and you know, so when you dally, rub's thrown out there. Go ahead and pick that up, Chris, please. Just walk backwards. You just go ahead and you can dally with a, with a loose, open hand is what they, we, I was taught but actually you're letting that rope run through your hand. Probably another thing, use one of the cotton roping gloves. That will protect your hand. That's a good way to learn how to rope. Back in prehistoric times when I learned, nobody used gloves and I never did learn. Doesn't feel right. So I'm still trying to do this. But the, the big deal, just drop it please, is, you know, go ahead, keep your horse straight, get yourself seeing down the line see what you're doing and position yourself so you can keep your horse safe and you safe. 